What makes a counselor in the bishop break begins studying 10 various books. Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. Last time we got uh, deep into uh, meeting and enjoying Stephen Farrell's story and appreciate you coming back for another visit here. And, Happy to be here. Thank yeah, you for having and, me. And we were ending up where you had gone online and found 10 books that uh, Mormons shouldn't yeah. read. My answer would be, or my thought was that they should read these probably, huh? And a lot of uh, them... I, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're prepared to go through a, a faith crisis. <laughs> and the glory of God is intelligence, right? And yes. we seek truth, and Mormons would say that uh, up on one side and down the other. Exactly. Yeah, but you started reading these books with an open mind, and I was kind of asking you, what is it that allows us to do that? And you had a couple of things that had yeah. kind of planted seeds that you thought, well, maybe there's something I... I ought to know more. Yeah, at this point I was really open to just learning more about the church because some of these things that I discovered about polygamy uh, were, uh, were unsettling and I thought, okay, I need to know more. And uh, when I came across uh, uh, all these books that uh, when you read who wrote them, they're LDS historians, Yeah, you mentioned authors, Rough Stone Rolling. Uh, yeah, or you didn't mention it, but we talked about it during yeah, the break. Yeah, so Rough Stone Rolling, writ it's written by an LDS historian yeah. A church well, patriarch. And, and Grant Palmer was an institute Palmer, director. Grant Palmer, institute director. Well, that's why I felt like I could read that, because yeah. it was uh, written by somebody that you know would be on my side. Exactly. And be honest, I guess, and objective. Yeah. But it really is, uh, it, it can cause a faith crisis, it because can. it's true. I mean, that's, that's the crazy thing. I mean, it, we shouldn't be afraid of the truth, and yet Mormons... Uh, run away from it. Yeah. And they won't even open up the book. So what did you do after you read these things and they kind of challenging your faith they, a little they, bit? It was, yeah, it was really challenging. I Did I, you share this with your wife? I, I hadn't yet. Yeah, and, me um, either. I didn't do that either. I, if I give advice to anyone that's reading these books, read it with your spouse. Share, and children. If you've yeah, got adult yeah. children, I yeah. that's another thing I regret is not yeah. sharing with my kids along the way when I when they still yeah. trusted me. <laughs> but I, when I read these books, Rough Stone Rolling, Insider's View of Mormonism, In Sacred Loneliness by Todd Compton, uh, Mormonism, The Magic World Review, uh, B.H. Roberts' book, uh, I read... That was uh, huge to me, too. Uh, View of the Hebrews. Oh, my. Uh, that was a quick read. Uh, uh, Mormon Enigma, <laughs> that's the you know biography of Emma Hell. Uh, yeah. And, and a few others, and my life turned upside down at this point. Um, it was uh, the most terrifying experience I ever had, because when I f just finished reading uh, Mormonism, The Magic Worldview, I knew there was something really wrong with the foundation of this church and our founding prophet. Oh something was really wrong. and. Uh, I, I knew I had to figure it. I had to figure it out, and so I didn't stop with those ten books. I went through every book I could get my hands on that was footnoted in these books because mm -hmm. I didn't want to take just Grant Palmer's word. Right, you want I had to read all of his source. all his sources, and uh, the Amazon bill was getting to a really high amount. That <laughs> my wife was like, "What is this? Like, we've, you've spent thousands of dollars on books? Just history study." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was going through all the Joseph Smith papers. At the time, it was 19 volumes. Oh, my goodness. And the church essays, did you oh, read Oh, I those? read. Yeah, there was only 14 essays when I right, was reading them. Right. Uh, there's now 100, over 120 of them. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. Oh, I hadn't. <laughs> they released them in that. September with the, with the release of Saints. Uh, oh, well, I, I knew there were like 17 or 18, but yeah. I didn't know about all those. Yeah, and uh, so I'm. I'm reading everything I can get my hands on, and I'm going to sitting on the stand every Sunday. I'm doing interviews, temple worthy interviews uh, with <laughs> members of my congregation. Do you have a testimony yeah. of? <laughs> and do you I, believe it? Exactly, and it made me feel like a, a hypocrite. hypocrite. 
and I knew I needed. That's a terrible feeling, isn't it? It is. And, and, it, and, and I, I knew I just I had to tell my wife. Yeah. Like I've got to tell her what's going on. I can't keep it a secret. And that was one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had. Because mm. I was watching podcasts on Mormon stories, and I'm hearing about divorces through because of faith crisis and I'm reading about it in these different forums and and I thought this could happen like yeah and so I I, th I thought I'd just keep it really simple at first I didn't tell her I didn't believe I just said hey I was reading the journals of discourse have you did heard you of know? that did you know <laughs> and here's some really interesting facts and I'm talking about uh you know all these Brigham Young quotes and Heber C. Kimball and Pratt and they're all very sexist type oh, of comments yeah. and belief systems. And and uh, my wife was like, okay, that's enough. I don't want to hear any more of it. And so I put it, put even, it aside. Even that stuff yeah. is, they just She didn't want to hear it. Yeah, not, not unusual. Yeah. I mean. And so I thought, okay. I waited a couple more weeks, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try again. <laughs> <laughs> and this time... Put another little tidbit out there. Yeah, this time I uh, I bring up some of the church essays, Blacks and the Priesthood. And Things the church has written. Yeah. Okay. And polygamy, like the church is admitting that Ignored. Joseph Smith had all these wives, that he married women that have living husbands, and that there was possible sexual relations. And I told my wife that I'm really struggling with these things. I'm struggling with my testimony. And my sweet wife, we look back at it now, like I can't believe this, but she asked me if I was sinning. <laughs> and you've got to be doing something wrong yeah huh? and that was really hard for me to hear that because no I'm not sinning <laughs> I'm reading church history I'm not sinning and uh, she goes you're being misled by the devil like just knock it off and yeah what what is that logic it <sighs> just escapes me now but and and I I sobbed I I just at that point I said you know what like internally I told myself I'm just gonna be a closeted ex Mormon the rest of my life, and I'm gonna have to live in this belief system kind to of stay in my marriage. Yeah. And I was prepared to do that. Kids? How many kids? Yeah, I got, got two two kids, boy two and a girl, kids. both under four. Temple marriage and all that. Yeah, yeah. and and so I, I I didn't want to back down yet. I wanted to try again with my wife. I'm glad I did. I said, read this book. It summarizes some of the major truth claims and, and, and talks about it from uh, an LDS uh, CES or a uh, Institute, Institute is director, Grant Palmer's, Grant Palmer's Insider to Mormonism. Born a really Mormon great book, summarizes those truth claims, breaks it down, easy to read. And my wife was like, no. So I put it on her nightstand. She took it off. I put it back on, <laughs> did this nightly. And, uh, we're having a really rough time. Uh -huh. She calls her best friend that is also LDS, but she has been inactive for years uh, after a tragic accident with her parents where she lost her parents. Oh. And uh, so my wife is telling her, like, she's really worried about me and don't, doesn't know what to do. It's causing a lot of contention. And he keeps trying to get me to read this book. I don't want to read it. And she goes, well, Courtney, I've had some of the same struggles. Oh, she's like, really? What a blessing. Yeah, and she's like, why don't we read the book together? Oh, my goodness. And I'm like, and I have no idea this is going on. And I come home one day from work, and my wife is like, I'm done. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you're done with what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, the with you? Like, what's going on? I don't know what you're done with. <laughs> and she's like, I've, I've read halfway through this book, and I, I'm just shocked. And she's like, so tell me more about the church essays. And... So we just like deep dive into this stuff. Really? Yeah. Oh, praise God. Isn't that, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it can be, turn out so, so differently, but what a yeah. blessing that it was. old friend it was. It was a blessing to have her friend. Yeah. You know. Kind of give her a little. Like would support her and say, let's read it together. Like, yeah. It's amazing that, you know, you don't, you don't always want to listen to your spouse, <laughs> but if your friend brings it up, okay, let's do it. <laughs> a little confirmation there yeah. or something. But. Yeah. And so that's where the real fun began. That's where a lot of challenges yeah. started happening. And so you tell that. us what happened in your transition here. So what'd you yeah, do? So after that, after we were done, you know, we had a little celebration and <laughs> we're like, what's next? 
Yeah. And this was right before conference weekend in April. Of which year? Uh, 2018. Just last year. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm going to call the bishop, Courtney. Or I'm going to tell him that uh, we're done. I'm going to resign from the bishopric and wow. move on with our life. Yeah. And so I did that. Bishop uh, met with me the very next day. And he's in my house. We're talking about my faith crisis. And he's not trying to understand. There's no word of prayer. There's no inspiration from this man of God. Like, it's just condemnation. And he condemns us in our own home that is going to destroy our family, our marriage. Everything that we've ever been working for in our lives will be gone if I don't turn from this path of, you know, trying to ask all the wrong questions about the church. And that <laughs> I just need to repent. And if I just sought my answers from God, that everything would be fine. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. I'm, I've been praying through this whole process. I've been talking to God, like, as I'm reading these books. Like, I'm, I'm, there's something wrong here, and there's no good answer. And sadly, he knows probably very little oh, of what you've yeah. been studying. Not that you, I mean, it sounds like you've studied so much even more than I did, yeah. but he doesn't even know the basics no. of the problems, does he? He didn't know the church essays. No. He didn't know they existed. No. And so, uh, so that was really hard, because there was no inspiration in this conversation from a leader. Just condemnation. Yeah, just condemnation. And yeah. So I, I then meet with my stick presidency. I thought I was just meeting with my stick president. I get in there and it's the whole presidency. The whole presidency. <laughs> I go, okay, Intimidating, I huh? Coming. I know where this is going. And now this is to be released. I mean, yeah, because so first wanna, counselor, or exactly. a counselor is a, uh, is a state calling. Exactly. So you had to yeah. go before them and ask to be released. Yeah, exactly. And it turned into a three hour conversation. And, and I, I told them, I'm really sorry. This is coming from left field. Like, this is months of agony and anguish and research, and I'm trying to summarize it over a, a short conversation. Which is very hard to it do. It's really hard. Yeah. And this, this conversation was really disappointing because I really, like, even though I had gone through all this church history, I was hoping that Somebody these are my leaders that have inspiration. Like, yeah. God help. is going to use them in my restoration. Help me out here. Yeah. yeah. And God didn't use them in my restoration. They had no idea what God was going to do in my restoration. And they can, they, they, my stick presidency told me to just stop researching for six months and all my answers would, would just come. And I thought, that stop, doesn't make any stop sense. Stop studying for six yeah. months. and All my answers would come. Oh boy. And I'm okay. like, no, I've tried that for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, one of the counselors of the sick presidency said, you know, Stephen, if you keep researching church history, if you keep going down this path, you're going to end up in prison for 15 years. And I'm, I, I'm <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? 15 years? And he's like, it's a slippery slope. He's like, I had a brother that started researching church history, and then he turned to drugs, and oh my goodness. went to prison, and I'm like, I don't even know how to answer. <laughs> I, I, that is just so disrespectful. Yeah. And, uh, dear. Yeah, and so, so we, I talked to the state president about the issues. It's not very uplifting, it's for not. sure. Yeah. And he, he's like, yeah, I, I read the polygamy essay. I got about halfway down. I thought, you know, the experts have figured this out. I don't need to read the rest, and I haven't looked at it since. Yeah. I'm like, great. The so thinking's been awesome. done. <laughs> yeah. So I leave that meeting. They're going to release me. But the really sad part about that meeting is I've been in this ward for years. I've built up great relationships. I've, I've loved the congregation. So many good friends. So much service, blood, sweat, and tears. And he asks me not to come back to the ward for a couple months as they sort this out. Like As they sort it out. Yeah, like I'm contagious. You yeah. know, my apostasy is going to be contagious. And I, th I said to him, I, that's exactly what I pictured Christ saying. Thank you. <clears throat> and oh then he goes, well, 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 you can come to my ward. I'm like, no, thank you. 
Oh, and, um, that was a good re that was a good response <laughs> on your part. <laughs> well, it was from it's just how I felt. That yeah. it's so sad. Like yeah, Christ's lost sheep. He's going to tell them to stay lost. Stay out there for yeah. a few I'm months. Gonna, I'm not going to come get you. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're good. Um, oh boy. So uh, that's inspiration. Yeah. So uh, I I I told my stick president that I'm still looking for answers. I'm still researching. I don't know where I'm going to end up after this. And uh, later, uh, just a week later, Area 70 reaches out and says, "Hey, let's meet. I'd like to talk about talk about your faith crisis." And oh, the stake president maybe mm -hmm. you talked to him. Or? I, I now, is this the church historian that you talked to? Not yet. Yeah. Oh, there's another. Okay. So I politely tell the the Area 70 that I'm not interested in meeting with him unless he's a church historian. Like this is not a spiritual matter. This is a historicity matter. Oh. That's interesting, yeah. Good yeah. perspective. Yeah, because I've already tried the spiritual route. Right. Not working. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's get some answers. Yeah, here. I just want to know why Joseph Smith had thirty four <laughs> wives and why he translated the Book of Mormon with his own seer's tone. Help yeah. me out with that one. Yeah. And uh, so he he uh, responds back just a few days later. He says, uh, I've I've met with the for, with the leading historian on polygamy and I'd like you to meet with him. And I thought really like okay yeah. and this for me this was like my very last shot at knowing if the church was true like i was so just happy like finally like i'm going to get answers to these hard questions like yeah i was just really happy and um uh, so we set up this meeting. Uh, Beyond polygamy, was yeah. there some specifics that you were posing, wanted to question him on? Yeah, I, I, I wanted to talk about the, all the issues in the Book of Mormon, the, the over 600 King James phrases in the Book of Mormon, oh. you know, these five to seven word phrases. From that, the 1789 exactly, Bible. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, uh, you know, all the pseudepigrapha in the Book of Mormon. And the archaeology. Archaeology, the, yeah, the lack of evidence. Yeah. And uh, so that was on the Book of Mormon. I wanted to talk about uh, Joseph Smith's false prophecies. Uh, if he's a prophet, you yeah. know, it, it clearly states in, was it Deuteronomy 22? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, if, if, if a prophet uh, prophesies and it's wrong he's a false prophet you should kill him like yeah I was like okay like why does these have so many false prophecies and uh, polygamy was a big one and uh, the seer stone use okay so magic. you were kind of armed with these questions and yeah, I read so much I just was like I need like I need help understanding these things because they're killing me on the inside and there's got to be a logical an there has to be a, a good explanation yeah especially from a church historian yeah uh, so I I meet with this historian. Uh, I'm not. I'm okay saying his name. Uh, he's he's met. Uh, it's pretty interesting. He's met with a lot of people just like me that have gone through a faith transition. And how does he stay uh, grounded? I wonder. But anyway. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't um, say his name unless you really want to. Well, he, his name's Brian Hells. Okay. Uh, and he's you know written the huge volume set on polygamy. Okay. His wife and himself sat down with 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 me for almost three hours and they were so kind so understanding zero judgment oh wonderful I, I mean I they are the the most wonderful people I've ever met in my life they were so welcoming and and Good. which I really appreciated because sure. I didn't get that from my state presidency <laughs> or, my, or my bishop and I uh, I ask them all the questions right about polygamy about the seer stone I ask him the questions on, you know, the false prophecies, and he gives me a lot of answers. All the same answers that I found on Fair, Mo Fair Mormon, which weren't very good. <laughs> they are just, well, it could be this, it, yeah. maybe it's not. Uh, that person was an, apost an apostate, so we can't trust his, his source. Yeah. Uh, you know, this person, you know, joined the RLDS church, so we can't trust that person. And so it was really hard to get, like, a, a really good answer that I could go home with and say, honey, the church is true. Like, we figured out these things. Yeah, it's, it's all cleared up. <laughs> yeah, it's all cleared up. False alarm. Let's go, let's yeah, go, let's yeah. go, go back. And uh, so that at the end of that meeting, I had a bigger hole in my testimony 
In fact, it was gone at that point. And I went into that meeting really hoping that yeah. I could get some sort of answer that would help me just stay and keep working towards it. I kind of, when I, I met also with a church historian, I just felt these, I call them stretched answers, you know, they're just kind of taking little bits of information and trying to cover all of the problems with these mm. stretched explanations yes. that really don't hold up. They don't. They just domino down and, yeah. 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 They don't hold up. Well, I know you're still in a period of rediscovery or discovering, you've said that. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, um, I'm not sure what that means exactly. Explain that to, <laughs> to us. You know, after we took off the blinders of Mormonism, yeah, uh, we were hurt. Again, all the bad news, as yeah. I call it. Uh, yeah. I, I felt betrayed. Yeah. And I thought, well, why could God, like, how could God do this to me? Like, how did I go th my entire life believing in Mormonism and having these spiritual experiences? I would God do that to me? Yeah. And a thought came came to my mind, like, well, what about the person that, you know, spent 50 years in is Islam and converts to Christianity? Does, should he blame God for not showing Christianity to him for 50 years? You know, it's just the culture that we live in and the geographic areas that we live in. It's just... It's just what it is. Yeah, and uh, and it's in God's timing. Now that you you probably yeah. appreciate that more, but yeah, and maybe you wouldn't have accepted earlier on, or you know, you just yeah. never know. It's hard to say. Yeah, and and I attribute Mormonism to helping me find Christ, but it just took a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now because I felt betrayed, we, I didn't know what I believed at that point, and. Uh, it's been uh, a really uh, f exciting process to try to rediscover our beliefs with no blinders, no expectations. You know, we're just out there learning. Trusting Jesus. and Yeah, we're, yeah. we're just really trying to find our way. Yeah. And we don't have any preset conditions. And that's the process. And we're still in the beginning phases. I mean, I'm sure what I believe now, 10 years from now, will be completely different than where you're at. Than where I'm at right now. You mentioned reading the Bible during this discovery yes. period. Have you read it or gotten into it again since? No, but that's that's the next step. One of your next goals, huh? Yeah. Well, there's, we've, because I see reading that now might be... Now I remember what it is. When I ask people about Jesus, mm -hmm. I never ask them about Paul. Did mm. you did you ever understand Paul at all? In in what in, in what Mormonism? Way? In did Mormonism, you, did you ever understand his uh, being an apostle to the Gentiles, and he had the gospel of grace that he was teaching? Well, yeah, he he took the the gospel to the Gentiles. You um, understood that as well. I mean, the yes. basic, okay. you know, you know, things you learn, but not. So what I'm saying now is, as you read the Bible, you'll read that. Read those scriptures of Paul yeah. and even the Old Testament, uh, even the words of Jesus, some of them. But just you'll see those now in a different light than you ever did before. Yeah. Because they all of a sudden talking about grace. We didn't understand grace as or no. Mormons don't understand grace, do they? No, well, we, I read the New <laughs> Testament with the Mormon goggles. Exactly. I that's have no what idea I mean. what it looks like outside of that. <laughs> It'll be exciting. I'll, I'll do I'm that excited for to sure. read it. Yeah. Because I, you know, and I had my missionary Bible. I went back and looked at my missionary Bible because I'd gone through that a couple of times. And I'd underlined scriptures, but they were all Mormon scriptures, you know. Uh, and then now <laughs> all the, the scriptures that really talk about grace and, and what Jesus did and Hebrews and, and Romans and stuff, it just, you know, I didn't mark those up at all in my missionary Bible. So <laughs> you've got a lot to look forward to. Well, thank you. Before we finish, though, and we're almost done again, um, you you do a post Mormon group that yeah, meet up and yeah. like a hundred members. Yeah, that my, you've wife, got? My, my wife and I we lead a post Mormon support group in Ogden, and that that group was there for for us during our transition. And oh, it was. And uh, the uh, the admins had been there for five years and they were ready to move on. Ready to let someone else take. And, uh, How do they, people get in touch with that or find that? Yeah, just look uh, at, look just on name? the Meetup app. They can look in uh, on the Meetup app. They can look for 
the Ogden area and you'll see a group there. It's Come. the only one. Just post? Post-Mormon. Post-Mormon yeah. On group? Facebook, it's, uh, it's Post-Mo, Ogden, oh. Ogden Post-Mo. Okay. And, uh, and YouTube or something? Yeah, you, I, uh, I have a, LD, uh, a history channel, History of the LDS Saints, where I talk about books like Rough Stone Rolling and the New Saints book, and I talk about all of the uh, issues that, the, or the facts the church is actually promoting and talking about now that used to be anti-Mormon. Yeah, that used to be anti-Mormon. Yeah. Isn't that true? <laughs> It's crazy, isn't it? They're yeah. trying to become what? more transparent. Yeah, and I think they're trying to, like they said, inoculate the youth. Yeah, it's, I think this. Oh, it's a very whitewashed, watered down version, right. especially the saints. But if you read the footnotes and the 120 essays that were published behind the book, and all of yeah, there, it's pretty clear what's going on. Yeah. I mean, you you understand the history at that point. Well, Stephen, I admire your courage, and I'm grateful that you're at this point in your life, and a young life it is. You've got many years ahead, and your wife is coming along with you. Yes, yes, oh, that's the best part. <laughs> that, that is wonderful. So i give you just the last few couple of minutes. Uh, anything you want to say to family, friends, and well, I, kind I, of share your... Yeah, I, I love my family, and uh, I know it's been, uh, it's been a hard transition for them. Yeah. Uh, they haven't been able to experience what I've been experiencing. They just they've got the the news out of left field, and it's been hard on on them, and and uh, it's, it's been hard on a relationship. But uh, I, you know, I, I know that uh, we'll all find some common ground, and <laughs> you know, outside of the church, and uh, um, you know, those of you that are still looking and trying to find truth out there, if it's Mormonism or not, uh, uh, you know. I'm sure you can find truth in, in, in lots of religions, and if you're studying church history, uh, you know it, it'll be uh, quite a process. It'll be uh, uh, an emotional roller coaster, but it it'll be worth it in the end to find what yeah. truth really is. That's excellent. I did have a son who asked me about coming back, you know, and I, you did. I yeah, and I said, "Come back to what exactly?" <laughs> I I felt like you did in so many ways, being a hypocrite. Yeah. Just, I knew one thing, and I couldn't act differently. So, yeah, makes sense. Exactly. That takes a lot of courage, though, to to come out of the bishop break and it's, to. to it takes a lot of courage did. for anyone to go against the cultural norms yeah. and the religion they grew up in, yeah. especially in Utah. And yeah. it's and it's one of the hardest things any any of us can go through. Because you're admitting that you've been deceived, yeah. which isn't easy to do. And you're admitting that, uh, but I think it's that humbling por part that allows us to, to be grateful to Jesus for what he did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. We start realizing this gift of grace that uh, we just never understood as Mormons. So <laughs> we certainly need it. <laughs> Stephen, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming and sharing. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.